A good Monday morning to you. I know that's a bit of a conundrum when it is a Monday, but anyway, we're glad to have you with us. And this promises to be a very active harvest week across the U.S. We'll try and keep you abreast of the situation as far as how things are going and what they're finding out in the field. I'm Marlon Bowling, your tour guide to these ag commodities. And well, I want to welcome aboard Mr. Brian Hoops. He is with Midwest Market Solutions. He is based in Springfield, Missouri. I did not see any overnight export sales announced this morning, Brian. Everything quiet there. And, you know, if you look at some of the outside markets, in fact, let me uh, bring up the Dow and the dollar here uh, as kind of a preface, if you don't mind. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 90 points this morning, December down at 29,579. Uh, let's look at the dollar value. That's the one that has really got a lot of attention here lately. Uh, you know, it got as high, <clears throat> when I looked at it last night, it was way over 114. It got as high as 114.445. Then it backed off. Now we're only 193 points higher, <laughs> only about 200 points higher, and all the way back down to 113.155. Uh, that has come a long ways off of that earlier high, but my goodness, that was almost uh, scary to see it up there at 114 overnight. Also in the crude oil trade, your West Texas Intermediate Crude, now it's up 31 points. We're at uh, 79.05 per barrel on that November contract. So uh, a little bit of a choppy affair there. It looks like we had roughly about a two and a half dollar trading range. And then you get to our ag commodity trade overnight. And well, we had weakness in the corn. December down three and three quarter cents at 6.73 as we get into the morning hours. And soybeans were down two and a half on November at 14.23 and a quarter. In Chicago, we go to that wheat market and we had December down seven at 8.73 and a half. No harvest going on there. Uh, a lot of pressure anyway. Kansas City wheat down three and three quarters at 946 and three quarters. And the Minneapolis wheat we had December down three cents at 946 and a quarter. And cotton we had December down 14 points at 92.40. All right, Brian. So let's dive into this here. Uh, harvest well underway. In fact, I was driving around over the weekend. I saw an awful lot of cornfields that are, were already gone in the Mid-South area here. Uh, soybeans are starting to turn fast on the leaves. What do you see out in the Western Corn Belt? Yeah, good morning, Marlon. Yeah, we did some uh, driving as well up to Sioux Falls and uh, back, and a lot of combines running, especially Saturday and Sunday. A lot of corn starting to come out in uh, southern Iowa and uh, northwest Missouri. Leaves are turning in the soybeans as well, so they'll be coming out real quickly. Uh, I would guess, you know, maybe 14, 15% of the corn crop will be harvested nationwide in this afternoon's report. Soybeans you know, eight to 10, maybe eight to 11% done. And we've also uh, saw some fields that were, uh, you know, that were soybeans now being dissed under and getting ready for the winter wheat planting season. Of course, it's really dry in the Western belts. And so there that's, uh, you know, farmers are waiting for temperatures to cool off, maybe get some rain showers and they are much cooler now. So we'll probably see some uh, more vigorous planting being done, hoping for those rain showers. But um, yeah, you know, we are lower overnight in the extension of Friday's sharp down move with the higher dollar adding to the weakness. Now, uh, the dollar's off of our highs. If we would happen to trade lower, I think you'll see quite a bit of buying coming in, a lot of short covering in the grain markets um, as a result. But we'll have to see if that, if that in fact happens. But the dollar is certainly in a strong uptrending market, which is going to slow down some of our export business, not only in the grains, but also the livestock market. How far do you think the dollar would have to come down in order to release that pent up demand? Well, you know, just to release demand, you know, you have to really break the uptrend and start trading lower to get us to trade higher in the futures. I think you just have to trade lower on the day. Uh, you know, the fact that we're already off of session highs, if we could kind of hold that, you won't see a lot more pressure to the grain markets. If the dollar would actually start to turn lower on the day, you'll see probably a, a big short covering rally because we were down real sharply Friday and in the overnight, uh, you know, just off of the news with the dollar screaming higher and these outside markets really falling apart on Friday. Well, compared to April when it was way below 100 points, uh, goodness, that is a totally different universe than where we were about six months ago. All right, we'll take a look at our livestock trade. And remember, we had cattle on feed numbers last week. We'll talk about that when we come back. As I mentioned, we did have a cattle on feed report that came out last Friday after the markets closed. 
Markets can't do anything about it until we open up here at the bottom of the hour. But I wanted to review those numbers and just to see what we actually came out with. The trade was looking for an on-feed number to be at 100%, and well, I'll be darned, it came out right on the money at 100%. Uh, the placements, they expected it to be 98.1% of a year ago. It came in at 100%. Hmm, maybe a little bit heavy there. The marketings in August were expected to be 105.9%. We'll round it to 106, and it came out shazam at 106, so no surprise there. The only thing that was off a little bit from the average trade guess would have been the placements number, uh, about two points higher than expected. Let's go back to Brian Hoops. Does that mean much in your book or not? Yeah, you know, probably not uh, a significant market mover on the opening this morning. The on-feed numbers were the second largest in history for the for this uh, month of uh, September, going back to 1996. They were just slightly larger than a year ago. The placement numbers, again, just slightly larger than a year ago, but um, you know, due to rounding, just right at 100%. Um, markings were, a, a, you know, a really strong number there, a bright spot to the trade, but pretty much uh, as expected. So no surprises. We we did trade lower going into the report. I think we're going to see a little bit of a bounce in early dealings this morning. And how high we go really kind of depends on what happens with the stock market. Um, the cash outlook right now, steady to maybe a little bit higher. Um, the show list numbers still being obsessed obsessed uh, this week. But uh, as we look at uh, the, the Packers slaughter last week, 667,000 head killed. That's a very strong number. And anytime you get above 650, usually an indication Packers are going to need to buy some cattle. So we'd look for at least steady to higher cash trade once again this week. Well, as you mentioned, we did, did as uh, seen on the screen here, we did go down into that report. And one has to wonder if that took any bearishness out of the uh, market uh, before the numbers even came out. But we did have October live cattle down 60 cents. We were at 144.25. Uh, and December live cattle were down 80 cents. We finished the week at 148.55. Now, that being said, after the uh, cattle and feed numbers uh, came out here, what does that do to the call here this morning, do you think? Yeah, I think we're looking at just a little bit of a bounce uh, this morning. You know, this wasn't a real bearish report overall. Uh, and I think you, you do probably open the market a little bit higher um, in both the live and the feeders. So we'll see if we can build on that higher opening and, and do a little bit of re recovery. You have a uh, quarterly hog and pig report coming out on Thursday morning. So the hog market, you know, really got trashed on, on Friday along with these other markets. It's probably a little oversold and uh, could see some sort of recovery going into that uh, report as it could be a little bit uh, friendly like the set last several reports have been. Well, let's check out the feeder cattle and see where we ended up there on Friday. And just for a point of reference, uh, they were mixed. We had October finishing 37 higher at 178.35. November was up 20. And uh, it finished Friday at 178.25. The deferreds, though, were a little weaker on the far out deferreds. And lean hogs that Brian was talking about, they had a hard time on Friday with October down a buck and a half and December down 287. They finished at 82.80. So they'll see if uh, we can regroup here this morning. Brian, excellent information. I appreciate that. And uh, good luck to everybody around that part of the region as far as harvest goes. Hope everybody stays safe. So we'll talk to you again soon, Brian. Appreciate it. Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. Janet, back to you.